A few years ago, my friend was vacationing in Honduras with his sister. They were sitting at a bar and thinking out loud, Hey, wouldn't it be crazy if we escape everything and come live here? And then the drinks began to pour in one after another. They woke up the next morning and they had purchased land. They've built a house and now they want to share it with their friends and family. So now it's time to make the trip. I just got to the airport. I'm exhausted. I barely slept and it's 4 a.m. here, so hopefully I can just knock out on this flight. It's always a nice surprise to get upgraded to first class, unless your airplane looks like this and your seat companion, well, does this. After several glasses of wine, we finally made it to our destination. San Pedro Sula, Honduras. I was anxious to get this show on the road, so I grabbed my bag and ran out to meet my driver, Maynor and his wife, Maritza. So we set off to complete my first mission in town, to find food. We stopped at a stand making fresh baleadas. A baleada is a traditional Central American street food. Its basic ingredients consist of a flour tortilla, a smear of refried red beans, crema and crumbled queso duro, a perfect snack to soak up some of that alcohol and send me on my second mission to stock up on groceries for the Airbnb. After a quick stop at the supermarket, we toured around town. Until recently, San Pedro Sula held the chilling title murder capital of the world, which is why so many people choose to fly through Roatan instead. But those tickets will cost you a pretty penny. So if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, San Pedro Sula is the way to go. Many tourists and locals swear by the newfound safety of the city, but don't be alarmed to see that armed security guards take up residence by the entrances of every shop, whether it's a gas station, clothing store, or pharmacy. After a day of exploring on my own, it was time to pick up the rest of the gang at the airport. We called it an early night and crashed at the Airbnb since tomorrow would be another early start to make our way to the remote island of Utila. If there's one thing I learned from my trip to Honduras, it's that no good deed goes unpunished. When Kirk purchased his land, he also wanted to give back. So he helped create Support Utila, a nonprofit organization that provides food, medicine, and educational support to the people on the island. So, today's mission deliver medical supplies to the island of Utila. Sounds simple, but it turned out to be a series of unfortunate events. To get to Utila, we would have to catch the 4.30 ferry in the afternoon. But there was one catch. The drive from San Pedro Sula to La Sieva is four hours, and we still had to make a stop at the pharmacy. There's no time to waste. With my bags all packed, I was ready to roll, except Maritza surprised us with a homemade breakfast. So we filled up, topped off the mimosas, and hit the road. We managed to buy most of the items from our pre-made list, but you wouldn't believe that it took us nearly three hours to get squared away. Sure, it took longer than expected, but this medicine would last the island about three to six months. With the medicine in hand and our spirits high, we began our journey towards La Sieba. Everything was going to plan, and then... So apparently our radiator cap fell off at some point during the drive to our ferry to Utila. So we've stopped at three, four mechanic shops to get a cap. And we finally found one, but it's still, I don't know, it has a little trouble. So we might not make it. 
and we were back in business. With everything going on, there was one thing that was making it much better, and that was the beautiful scenery. The picturesque view of the pineapple farms on the way to La Sieba and the clouds that smudged the sky above the mountaintops reminded me that we were in paradise. Thank you, Madam Derry, for deciding that the middle of the road was the best place to get a view of your surroundings. Stuck in traffic and we're going a little crazy because it is bumper to bumper right now and uh, yeah, no one is moving and we are T minus two hours from our ferry and we're three hours away. With all the delays, we see that the ferry idea isn't going to work, so we scrap it and decide to opt for a private plane. But all our efforts prove to be fruitless. So we missed our ferry and the flight, and we had no other choice but to get the most luxurious room in La Sieba and stay the night. At least we managed to buy the supplies, see beautiful scenery, and the following day was a whole new adventure that we were more than happy to explore. finally made it onto this beautiful ferry that's going to take us to the island. And honestly, once we got to the ferry, the rest was a breeze. The ferry ticket will run you about $25 to $30 a ticket. And after a quick 45 minutes of dolphin and whale shark watch, you're on the island. Since there are no cars on the island, the best and cheapest way to travel around is via the globally well-known tuk-tuk. And if you're staying off the beaten path like we are, that means driving through the buzzing strip of bars, restaurants and shops, and over to the edge of the mangroves to catch a water taxi. A private water taxi can be arranged through your Airbnb, but you'll probably hear the names Sherry and Derek as your go-tos. They shuttle people back and forth all day long, but their prices, although reasonable, will vary on the time of day or night. After a few minutes of whizzing through the mangroves and hidden water channels, you have your own piece of tropical jungle and exotic turquoise beaches. Everyone's still inside, putting their bags away and all that crap. And I said, hell no, I'm running out to the beach. Oh, it's so beautiful. They made the two, three days of travel worth it. Ah. Once you're on this secluded side of the island, there's not much else to do other than lay out and enjoy the stunning scenery, swim, and use this time for some much needed deep breaths, a little warrior pose, and maybe a headstand. After you've gotten enough zen time, take a walk over to the only bar in town, Neptune but definitely take the scenic route along the beach and check out some of the colorful houses tucked in the trees. Neptune's and its iconic dock is the perfect hangout spot to meet other travelers and locals that come to dive or snorkel the reef right out front. 
Tourists travel to Utila for one major reason, scuba diving. Even though a relatively late comer into the world of diving, Utila is home to the second largest barrier reef and is fast becoming one of the best places on this planet to view the lush coral reefs and if you're lucky, dive with whale sharks. Your best chances of spotting these gentle giants is anytime between March to May. If that wasn't enough reason to dive here, it's also far more affordable than any other dive destination. Since the reef is accessible from basically anywhere on the island, shore diving is the way to go. We were able to get a load of tanks delivered at $10 a pop. And with our tanks already there, all we had to do was strap on our gear and walk right in to the majestic world of marine life. There are hundreds of species of fish, mollusks, and over 60 species of stony coral, which means you're guaranteed to see something different on every dive. Remember all the medicine we were supposed to deliver? Well, we may have gotten a little distracted. But not to worry, after a short walk, a water taxi, and a quick tuk-tuk ride, we were at the clinic. We did it! And since we're in town, might as well celebrate over some drinks and food. The Monkey Lala is the utility. And so the Monkey Lala has vodka, Bailey's, Kalula, and coconut cream. It's like it's like an adult dessert. The restaurants on the island are fairly cheap and the food can be delicious if you find the right restaurant and order the right menu items. Our favorite was the open air bar and restaurant Mango Tango, situated right on top of the water. Or if you rather cook for yourself, there are tons of open market stalls that sell a wide range of tropical fruit and groceries. 
If you love to drink, there are a number of bars on the strip, and Tequila Tuesdays is a real thing and taken very seriously. Keep in mind, if you're crossing the mangroves at night, there's a slight visibility problem. With our last day quickly approaching, there was just enough time for one more activity. So we decided to rent a boat and visit some of the adjacent K's. This one in particular, Water K. You can walk around the entirety of this uninhabited island in about 15 minutes. It's full of short palm trees surrounded by pristine waters. And don't forget your diving gear if you plan to explore some of the uncharted reefs around the cave. The snorkeling and diving here is magnificent. Or just lay back and enjoy the view. After eight days of unexpected adventures and much needed relaxing, it was time to leave this unassuming piece of paradise. But this time, we were able to enjoy a proper send-off. Lesson learned, the chartered flight in and out of the island is the quickest and best way to go with unmatched views of the islands from the sky. For more detailed information and travel tips about Honduras, Read our article linked in the description below or leave a comment. And if you want to support Go With Row for more videos like this, click like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon.